Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. Today's going to be a haul video. I don't know that I'd call it a tool haul because some of these things you might not consider tools, but these are basically some products, whether they're a tool or whether it's something for writing or some, something else that I use in my line of work that I have bought over the last month or so, and they have helped me in some way, or maybe I think the original of what I was using before is better. So this is some of those things where I don't know that I could do a review on many of these things, but if you want more information, you can put it in the comments below and I'll see if I can do something. But I think this is a, these products are better suited for me to just go through several of them within one video, just to let you know that they exist and kind of what I use them for. And maybe that's going to be helpful to you. Now, some of the things that I bought over the last little bit, I've already made videos for like the Nolster uh, holster clips, man, I have really been loving those just to be honest with you i really really like them uh so far i've been using them every day since i bought them and i i really think that they're the best thing that i've tried so far that does that kind of a thing so if you haven't seen those uh make sure you check that out of course we had the fat ivan uh door lock i've got my power smith light uh and then that kai wheats just went over that electronic screwdriver set and again they did send me a meter I, i'm gonna kind of just go show it to you here in this video but it's a 20,000 count meter i haven't really got into it and used it a whole awful lot so i'm not ready to make a review on that but again let's just go over all these tools the ones that i picked up in the last little bit maybe some of them will interest you maybe you've already got some of them and you can let me know what you think about them in the comments below but also put down in the comments below uh what's the favorite tool product whatever that's helped you do your job in the last month or so if you've bought something What's your favorite thing you bought so far? Put that down in the comments below, but let's go ahead and get into these. So one of the first products that I've got picked up was this Hultaforce pencil. It's kind of like your carpenter's pencil. I saw this on tool reviews of tools I use. Now, I already had it in my list before that, but he had some good thoughts about it whenever I was looking at it. Ended up making me pull the trigger, especially once I figured out that the lead was kind of the same, which I'll get into in a minute. So this is very similar as far as a type of a pencil as the Pika 3030, which I carry in every bag, every apron, every all my vest. I've got lots of these. But price-wise, this one's only going to run you about $11 for one pencil versus the Pika. If you only go buy one, it's going to be like $18. Now, you can get a two-pack for 24 and that's the way to go if you're going to get these because it's just silly to buy one for 17 when you get two for 24 you're always going to wish you had two at some point in time uh, but i wanted this one because of a few reasons one is that price another one's the color even though that sounds si silly but i'm a big red fan i just like red and then i also whenever i was watching that video i like the shape of it because that's more like your typical carpenter pencil which is what you know this lead takes the place of it still has you know the built-in sharpener just like the pika does so you can you can put this in there and you know sharpen your lead get a good point on it but there's one downside to it and that is the fact that the pika as it's round which you know it's going to roll more if that's a big thing to you that's not necessarily a big problem for me because i pretty much either have it in here or i'm writing with it uh but it's got that little nub there that catches to keep it from rolling more so now this won't hardly roll at all because of the shape that it is so that's a that's a benefit of it but the the downside of this shape versus the round is with this holster being round I, I don't have to worry about where i locate that pencil whenever i'm going to put it up so if i'm working and i'm trying to blindly put my pencil back into the holster while i'm holding some work pieces or you know doing whatever it is i don't have to hit that you know right on exactly where it needs to be so that's great on this one versus this one if i put it in straight you know it even clicks in there it's going to hold tight so i can go that way i can put it in backwards but the problem is you have to have it in in that orientation right there you can't put it in you know this way it won't go in far enough that way it won't go in far enough so basically you have to be able to hit your pencil and it kind of will twist as you put it in if you if you hit it to a certain degree but if you hit it straight on the opposite direction you, it just kind of gets stuck there so it's a little bit clumsy uh, when you're trying to put it up so it doesn't work as well so for that reason alone for me i'm sticking with the pika even though i like the shape the color and all those things of this better the pika is better in my opinion now one thing that i would say if you're a Pika person and you don't think you're going to change, I would suggest going with this Hultafors lead because for $7.99, you get 10 leads. 
and it comes in a case like this because the pico lead's fairly expensive and it comes with that little plastic almost like a pocket protector type case i never have liked those cases and this one you just turn you know this little nub here and get that open dump you a lead out and as far as the holtafors lead going in the pika pencil which uh, he told me that this worked as well whenever i commented on his video but you can swap this out and use this lead in your pika pencils too so for 7.99 you get 10 leads works well the lead is just as dark if not it might even be a little bit darker to me than what the pika pencil lead is as well so even though the to me the pencil is not necessarily a win and i'll still use it i like the pencil it just certain tasks where i know i'm going to need to locate it right i'm not going to go with that one i'm going to go with this pika but i am for sure going with this lead from now on out so that's the holta force pencil that's the lead you guys let me know what you think about it in the comments below so the next thing I picked up was this drywall panel lifter slash rasp slash bottle opener slash, I don't know, it's probably got some other functions, but I bought it for the two, one being the lifter and two being the rasp. Um, typically I would use a lifter like this that's got that roller action. You just kind of scoot that in, put your foot on there. You can lift that drywall up and down or a door or whatever else that you want to use it for. You can use this for doors as well. Uh, but that's big, that's bulky. Uh, and it always happens where I use it somewhere and then I'm going and as I'm going next time I need it It's all the way back at wherever it was the last place. I used it. This is fairly small um, I see what size it is here. So you're looking at about seven inches uh, I just I just throw this in my back pocket or I also sometimes throw it in a pouch if I'm wearing one so it, it's a whole lot more feasible to always have on you versus that thing because that's heavy as well and this is extremely light made out of some kind of a, a metal material uh, i'm assuming uh, it's some kind of thick aluminum or something it's not magnetic so I, I don't know exactly what it's made out of it's made in china there you can see uh, they have it on amazon i've also seen these inside the store at lowe's so if you go to lowe's very often you can check it out there uh the panel lifter works as this does it it kind of gives you that leverage this is the same thing you just set that slide it up and under the drywall and as you step up on this it gives you that lift uh, i will say up front it doesn't work as well as one of these you don't have kind of that fine tune as that because that roller is basically going to move in and out with the board as you're as you're putting that leverage to it versus this is more of a pivot but it does work uh, it works well enough for me that it's worth not carrying that around with me and the one feature that i'm actually surprised about because i didn't think it would work that well but i also thought man if i could knock out two things because i carry one of these around with me anyway so now if i can carry this and get rid of this uh i can you know knock out two things at once and the rasp actually works really well on this i really like it because you kind of have this channel here that you can set that drywall in and you don't have to worry about it kind of slipping on and off you don't have to guide it near as much you just kind of stick it in there and, and go to town now it might not fine tune it as well as something that's got this many slots but i really like it i think it works really well for 15 bucks uh, i think it's a good thing if you do drywall and you use one of these and one of these you might want to just look into it give it a try i mean it's 15 dollars. you might not like it i personally really do but you know sometimes some tools are for some people and sometimes they're not so pick this up thought it was useful let me know in the comments below what you guys think next thing that i kind of have swapped over to and this is something that i honestly never thought that i would find something that i like better than these uh but i'm gonna be honest with you whenever these first came out i could write on about anything and it would i mean dusty whatever it just seems like the last several that I bought don't seem to write as well. I don't know if they've changed something on these, uh, but they just don't seem like they're as good. And so I kind of picked up one of these at Lowe's, the Sharpie Pro Chisel. Uh, but I, I use the fine a whole lot more than I use the chisel. But I picked them up and tried them, and this chisel works so incredibly well. I mean, laying out floors and, and things like that on some kind of floor concrete floor that's had drywall dust and mud and everything else all over it this thing i mean writes like a champ i like to kind of draw out lines whenever i'm doing lvt flooring on concrete uh, so that way when i put my glue down and it dries i can still see it and this thing i mean like a champ 
So I, I finally figured out that they sell the fine point. They don't have, like these you can pick up at Lowe's. Those you can't. They kind of have some that look like the old Sharpie that are Sharpie Pros. But these I have swapped out in my bags with the ink zoles with these. And this is kind of a flat, again, kind of going back to similar of that Holta Force pencil. It's flat, so whenever you have you know the lid on it's not going to roll anyways but even if you got the lid off again if you're a person who the rolling thing is something for you uh it's not going to roll versus the ink zoll it won't roll with that cap on because the cap's going to stop it but if you just had just a just a sharpie by itself uh, it's going to roll but as far as these pencils they they write you know fantastic on whatever it is whether it was dirty or whatever now the chisel one does seem like to me it writes a little bit better but this one still writes just as well as an ink zaw does but i think it personally writes better on that you know wet oily surfaces so far the ones that i've used it on and again it may be that i got a bad batch of ink zaws or something like that but it seems like soon as i touch a dusty floor with one of these it's done you know until i unless i can find somewhere where i can kind of wipe it off and get it restarted it just doesn't want to write on things where used to they used to work like uh, you know pretty nice they used to work awesome but it just seems like here in the last little bit the ones that i've got haven't so i decided to go with these they do still i was kind of a little bit leery because i as how big that is because you know how well the ink zoles fit in these little bitty pockets on your veto bags but these sharpie pros you know fit in there just as well i think they only have black in the fine maybe they got some other colors that's all i saw but i really like them so far i bought enough of them that these are what i'm, I'm going to run through these and see how much you know make sure that they still work as well over the course of time uh, just because i've been having some issues with these not working as, as well as they used to so i'm going to swap out to these i personally like them I don't know if any of you guys have been using them, but you can let me know in the comments below how well maybe anybody else out there, have you tried both of these? And do you like one more so than the other? Let us know down in the comments below. I will say one thing about these is that the smell is a little bit stronger than that of the ink zoll. So, you know, that's a plus or a minus depending upon who you are. It takes you back to the school days where you always had your friends who like to sit around and smell markers all day long well these right here will do that for you so then again that's something to take in consideration if you're working in a, a space where there's occupants and things like that you know there is a little bit of a smell to these that's a little bit bigger or, or a little bit more pronounced than what the ink zoles are but i really like them uh you might want to check these out so next up on the list is the wagos the 2212401 or maybe they're vagos i don't know I probably pronounced those wrong, but Wagos is what I call them. Uh, I've always had the two and the three and the five connectors, and, and I love them because I deal with stranded wire a lot and sometimes stranded too solid. A whole lot easier to make a connection with one of these in that instance than it is to do something else. Uh, and just it's nice, especially to use these in situations where you're temporarily putting things together. You know, I do a lot of times where I'm, I'm wiring a switch. Uh, at the beginning of a job and then i want the lights to be able to come on and off or i want to make something work in a different way you know you can easily just put this on something you know power something up every day like a switch and then take that wire out you know it's just easy then in, instead of taking a wire nut on and off and on and off over and over again much easier thing for this well these are the splicing connectors so unlike those this is more of a a straight line uh, deal to where you can put one wire in one side and then one wire in the other and i can see where this would be extremely nice for several things one being if you have a box that has a really short wire in it it allows you to just kind of basically get get your wire set up like this that you're going to extend it with and then just go into that box and push that in there and then just flip that lever down and now you've extended that wire inside of a box so if you had this little short thing that was in there that you couldn't get in there and get your get your wire nut on or anything like that extremely useful in those situations or in places where where you're putting this wire in it's a lot tighter fit that you can't use something else because you know if you use a wire nut it's going to obviously be bigger than this now this is no different than having the two connector like this one 
but if I wanted to use the two connector, I'm going to end up with a whole lot bigger thing at the at the place where I've got things connected. So obviously I could put that on that short wire in like that and also have another wire in here like this. And then I'm going to have to fold that out back around this way, you know, to be able to have that come out of my box. Well, that's a that's just more wire. That's a whole other loop that you got to get tucked back in there. And then again, if you're say you're doing something in a car, an automobile of some kind and you need it to be in a straight line and you don't have enough room to be able to put this you know right here in somewhere it needs to fit in some kind of a little track or something you know i think that this is a good option for that so you can get a box of 20 of these for 15 dollars, or i got a box of 60 for 30 because basically you get 20 for free at that point so that's what i ended up buying just because i know i'm probably going to end up using several of these <clears throat> they're not something i'm going to use every day but these would be something when the situation arises you know i'll have those to go with instead of going with this because you know a lot of times this right here is fine you know and it's not gonna it's gonna work out for me just as well for it to be put together like that and i don't need it to be in a straight line but every now and then it'd be nice to be able to have these so let me know what you guys think about these if you've got them if you've been using them how well you like them and also I remember seeing a long time ago videos because see I can't get these anywhere except Amazon I, there's nobody locally that sells these but ideal was supposed to be coming out with something along the lines of these I haven't seen them in the stores I haven't seen them online uh, anybody knows anything about that put that down in the comments below too I'm interested to see those I'd like to be able to get things like this uh, locally because I always have to order a bunch because I don't know when I'm gonna necessarily need some but I really like Wagos. I mean, I love them. They've kind of, in a way, almost replaced wire nuts for most situations that I'm in. Now, if I'm doing something that's going to be something 100% permanent that I'm never going to get back into again, I still usually use a wire nut. And if it's all solid wire, sometimes I do the twisting and do the wire nut. But I really like these. Uh, I've had good success out of these. And again, for temporary work and then even for just testing things because it's kind of like... You know, if I wanted to hook this up and I want to sit there and just keep jumping things or checking for, you know, continuity or whatever, you can use them for all sorts of stuff. I think it's a really good thing for diagnostic to have some of these in your bag uh, so you can make things however you need to. So that's the way goes, the 221-2401 inline splice connectors. I didn't even know they were out until I was just scrolling through Amazon. I think they're going to be really useful, so maybe you guys didn't know it either, but there they are so hope it's help hope it's helpful so i got two more tools one of the last ones that i picked up was this tough built scraper utility knife and actually i didn't buy this one one of my buddies bought it for me uh, because he said that i'd really like it uh, he picked one up so and it is pretty useful i'm just going to be honest with you i've not been a big tough built buying things and the main reason why is because i just don't go to lowe's that often and that's where they're sold at for the most part so this one's going to run you twenty dollars at lowe's they do have some tough built stuff on Amazon. I couldn't find this anywhere, but it's basically a utility knife. You know, you got a little bit of an opener here for, you know, open a paint can or a bottle or whatever it is. Uh, it's pretty similar in size to my Knipix uh, knife that I just picked up, which this is growing on me. I really do like this. It's still not going to replace my fastback. Neither one of these would be like a everyday stick it in my pocket type knife but there are certain situations where both of these uh come in handy so basically this is a utility knife you just press this button here lift it up kicks back so it's your it's your standard utility knife now it's a bit fat so you gotta kind of get used to that uh, but here's the thing about it that's you know the nice part so you press the button again and press it on up and then it flips over to a scraper with a razor blade so now i can take and scrape things with it as well that's primarily what i have used this for so basically i'm going to carry this on a job where I, we were doing the final cleanup on a, some office space build outs cleaning off windows cleaning off some tape goo and you know i had to go and clean up some flooring uh, mastic for some lvt flooring that where we went into a room where no floor was going to be as like a utility closet you know so this scraped that right up so you know whenever i need to swap back and forth between the scraper uh, it's mostly whenever I need a scraper, that's when I'm going to carry this in my pocket. And then if I need to use it as a knife, 
I can use it as a knife. But I mean, it's really easy, really fast to change that over. I've seen a lot of people have this uh, in their videos. Uh, one big downside to it is that you have to have these tough built blades uh, because you can see here is whenever you go to change this blade, you, there's no press push button. You have to pull that and then you can pull this blade out. It kind of has this little indention here that works with uh, the scraper function. So you have to buy these blades to work with this knife. Now you can use these blades on other knives, but you have to have these knives to work or these blades to work on this knife. So even if you buy some and you carry other knives, if you like the blades well enough, you can use them on other knives, but you do have to buy this knife uh, or these blades for this knife that's the only downside to me of it but as far as for a scraper the size of this because you know instead of using something like this where you have this kind of a razor blade even though that's thinner and you might be able to get that in you know you can't really put leverage on this because it starts pushing this back and this starts breaking it's not really made to be like a beefy scraper where this thing is pretty substantial in your hand and you know it's it's pretty beefy up in here to where you can put quite a bit of oomph on it and you still get a good scrape and, you know, replaceable blades. I think it's a really nice tool to have uh, for 20 bucks to get you a knife and a scraper all in one. If you want to carry that with you, and again, you can swap back and forth that easy. I think it's a pretty good tool. I've been pretty impressed with it so far. So now whenever I'm going to do cleanup basically duties, I might throw this in my pocket and then that way, if I do need a knife, I've still got one. But more than anything, this is how this one's going to get used probably 90% of the time. So that's the Tough Built uh, Scraper Utility Knife. You get five blades and the knife and the scraper for 20 bucks. Not a bad deal. So then one of the last things that I picked up in the last little bit is the 8801 180s. That's the seven and a quarter alligator from Knipix, not the Cobras. Uh, Metro Wash said that he was a big alligator fan. He liked them better than the Cobras. And I said, you know what? I haven't really honestly used this style of tongue and groove pliers with this kind of a setup for a long time. Uh, I, I think the Irwins came out with the push buttons a long time ago, and I swapped to those. And it just seems like that's what I want to go with because that's what I've gotten used to. Now, back in the day, this was all I had. This is, the, what, you, this is what you grew up using. And a lot of you, I know you still prefer this. He said he did. Uh, because that it's kind of rem reminiscent of the channel locks it's it's kind of that same type of setup where you basically can you know you, you don't have near as many adjustments as what you do on the cobra because you got all those fine-tuned adjustments right there versus you only got this many on this uh, but for the most part you know if you hit one of those it's close you know that's you're going to be right there with it sometimes this is too much adjustment uh, but I, and I think that might even be what he said in his comment is that he just finds that it's just too, too hard to get it exactly where you want it to be versus this gets you somewhere and you're happy about it because you don't have to sit there and finagle with that. Uh, one thing about this style versus a Cobra is the same thing I said whenever I was looking at these smart grip pliers is that sometimes that push button does get in your way, uh, uh, and it, it's a lot thicker it sticks out if that's something that runs into an issue for you maybe you want to look into getting some alligators because as far as the head of it it's exactly the same so it's no difference of a plier as that i went ahead and picked me up a seven and a quarter pair because that's my favorite size uh so it's still the same head it's still slim uh basically it's reversed to where you've got the two here and the one in the front this one's got the one in the back and the two in the front so it's the same thickness other than that button. You know, that button sticks out a little bit. Sometimes that can become a problem. Uh, personally, I feel like I'm going to still like these way better just because it's just, it's a whole lot easier to me to do this than it is for me to sit here and, and do this. And these actually seem like they're harder. Maybe they'll break in than any of my old channel lock pliers. But again, it's been such a long time since I've used this style. It may just be, I'm just not used to using it, but you know, I've got to sit there and even whenever I got it somewhere, I've got to kind of play with it a little bit to get it to go into that slot uh, versus this is just, you know, it's that simple. So I'm gonna put them in my bag. I'm gonna use them for a while, see what I think about them. Uh, again, I always like tool suggestions. So appreciate that Metro wash. 
Uh, anybody else that has any, again, put down in the comments below what's the favorite thing that you bought in the last, you know, month or so, whether it's a tool or it's a, you know, riding utensil, a knife, uh, some weight, something like Wagos, some kind of product that has made your job easier. Let us know what you do in the comments below and let us know about that because that's whenever I read through there and I see stuff, I go straight to Google or Amazon or whatever and I search it and look it up because there's all sorts of things out there that, you know, none of us really know about till somebody tells us about it. And sometimes some of those things are what makes our job easier and more enjoyable. Again, I didn't want to go on any reviews on some of these like these. I've just, I literally just got these in the mail like two days ago. The Kiwitz meter, uh, it's a 20 count meter or 20,000 count meter. Uh, I still haven't really delved into that one yet. It's the HT118E. Um, so maybe I'm going to do a review on this at some point in time. They didn't ask me to say I had to, but I probably will. I just haven't really got gotten any use out of it yet to really try it so uh but let me know in the comments below if you've got any of these tools i talked about today or if you think that you might could use any of them uh, again i hope that this was useful in some way i just decided i'd go ahead and throw out a lot of these little things and rapid fire them to you just so that you know that they're out there maybe some of them's useful maybe you don't care about any of them but i hope it was useful in some way you guys stay safe have a blessed day and i'll see you on the next video